We've seen how to create a Rails application and how to access it to the browser. But we haven't created any of our own code. We haven't done any of our own custom configuration. And that's what we're going to start doing here. We're going to do that by creating our own controller and view. Think back to the MVC web architecture diagram that I showed you before. We had the browser communicating with the controller, which makes decisions. And then it could communicate with the model in the database to deal with data. And then when it was ready, it would tell the view, OK, now render the presentation back to the browser. We're going to focus on the first part of that, that little triangle between browser, controller, view, and then back to browser. We're not going to be dealing with the data just yet. We'll come back to that a little later on. We don't have to access any data at all, right? The controller can make a decision and say, oh, browser, based on what you've told me, I would like to show you this view. And that's it. It just shows you the view. It goes right back there. And that's what we're going to be doing to start out so that we can get kind of a feel for how that part of it works. So let's see how to create the controller in view. So as you can see, I'm in my command line, and I am still in the root of my application, simple CMS. You'll want to make sure you've navigated there. And I can use the Rails command again. But in this context, instead of creating a new Rails application in the root of my Rails app, if I specify generate, it will generate things for me. Okay, Only from this special place, only in the root of this application, will it be able to do these generations. It has to be in that place. So navigate there, Rails generate, and with nothing after it, it'll come up and give you the options that generate will accept. So you can see we can generate a lot of different things. We can generate a controller, we can generate a helper, we can generate a model, and so on. We'll come back to more of those later. The one we want to focus on right now is controller. So Rails generate space controller will give us more information about generating a controller. It's a help page, just the same as that was. Now the important part of this is right here, the description. It stubs out a new controller and its views past the controller name, either camel cased, meaning that it's all run together with uppercase in the middle, like the humps of a camel, or underscored, and a list of the views as arguments. Now that's actually optional, that list of views. We don't have to. But what it's telling us is Rails generate controller and then the name of the controller we want to create. So the first one I'm going to create is a controller called demo. We're going to use that for our demonstration purposes, the demo controller. And we could just run it like that. It would create the controller for us. But we can say, all right, let's go ahead and create a view at the same time called index. So we could put a list. If we wanted more, we could have index and edit and new. And those could all be the names of different views that we were going to be working with. But I'm just going to create index for now hit return, and it will generate some files for us. And it will give us an inventory of what it just did. Now, this will make more sense as we do a little more, but you can see that it created in the app folder, controllers, demo controller.rb. Now, let's take a look over here in the simple CMS folder, and you'll see that I have a folder called app. That's where most of my code is going to be residing. And in there is controllers. And sure enough, demo underscore controller.rb got created there. You'll also notice that a little further down, it says that in app views, it created something called demo. App views. Here's a folder called demo. If we open that up, inside is index.html.erb. And those file endings, we'll talk about what they mean a little later on. But for now, just see that it tells you what it created, and we can look in the app folder and find those things that it created. It also created some helpers for us and a test for us. Again, we'll work with those things later on. Go ahead and pop open the demo underscore controller dot rb. Rb lets us know it's a Ruby file. If I open that up, it comes up in TextMate. Uh, we can also drag it on top of your editor or open it from the file open menu if you need to. But we can see inside it's just a simple Ruby class called demo controller that inherits behavior from application controller. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but that's what the Ruby code is telling us. And there's a method called index that's been put in here for us. Now, when a method is inside a controller, we also refer to it as an action. Only in that context. It's still a Ruby method in the class demo controller, but because it's in the controller, we call it an action as well. So you'll hear me often say the action when it's actually the method. Now, it's no coincidence that index here matches up with the name of the template, the view, here, index.html.erb. If we open that up, you'll see that there's some HTML inside this. This is our presentation layer. It also did one more important thing for us. In our config file, there's a routes file, which we'll talk about extensively later on. For now, it just added something here called get demo index. That lets us get from the controller demo 
the action index. We'll come back to that later on, but just know that that's what it does for now. So for now, inside this template, let's just change it. Demo index, instead of telling it where to find us, let's put in the classic hello world. All right, so there we are. Hello world is going to be inside those paragraph tags on this page. So let's take a look at our beautiful work. We have to first start the web server. So here I am still in my Rails root, right? There I am in simple CMS, Rails, and then server, or just S for short. That'll launch WebBrick. Then we'll go to Firefox, localhost 3000, just like before. But this time after that, we'll put slash demo slash index. It's going to come up and it's going to give us the hello world. Now, if you didn't get what I got, if instead you got an error that was something like MySQL2 error, access denied, well, the reason why that's happening is because Rails is looking for the database. Now, we aren't doing anything that uses the database yet, and Rails shouldn't be trying to load the database yet. It shouldn't try and load it unless we need it. And this requirement that the database be there, even though we're not needing it, is something that's actually come and gone from Rails over time. So when I originally recorded it, it wasn't a requirement. Now it is a requirement, and maybe in the future it won't be a requirement again. But that's the issue. The problem is that Rails is trying to load up the database, and we don't have that database, and we also haven't configured Rails to connect to it, even once we have it. So the solution is pretty easy, though. The solution is that you just need to skip ahead to Chapter 6, Databases and Migrations, follow Movies 2 and 3. Movie 2 will help you create the database. Movie 3 will configure Rails to connect to it. Then Rails will be able to find the database and connect to it, even though it's not using it. Now, if you didn't get this error, you don't need to worry about it. You just keep going. And when you get to Chapter 6, then you can create your database then. So now we've created our first controller and action in Rails. And we can see the first part of that MVC cycle at work. We have the browser making a request to the Rails application, goes to the controller demo, and from there renders the view index back to us.